My name is Antonia LaFaso. We're here at Black Market Liquor Bar in Studio City. I kind of just like to take very sort of classic dishes and just be more playful with them. You want people to connect with the food, you want them to recognize it, and then you want them to be like, this is completely different. So for me, that's being inventive. A great tip for the at-home cook is, honestly, you have to just keep cooking. <laughs> Everybody's had grapes and cheese before. This is just a different, a little bit more innovative way of serving grapes and cheese. So you have your pan just heated to sort of a medium temperature, a little bit of olive oil, and I'm just gonna ever so gently lay the grapes on the inside. I don't want them to fall off the vine. That's kind of the beauty and the excitement of the dish, of your guests being able to sort of pick them off the vine. So you don't want to move them around too much in the pan, and you don't want to be too aggressive with them. You have to be nice to them. I'm gonna do a little bit of salt on top there. Taking them by the vine to flip them, you can see how they get a nice little color on the outside of them. We don't want to overcook the grape. You don't want it to kind of turn into a jam. We just want it to soften them a little bit and give them more of a savory flavor so that they can enjoy a sweet and savory kind of a grape. When it comes to the sherry, I would always say stand back a little bit. It can get a little overwhelming in the senses. So since we've got the contrasting colors of the grape, you definitely want to accentuate that when you're plating it. The red on the bottom and a little bit of the green on top. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of blue cheese to it. So generously, go ahead and just sprinkle that cheese and just some perfectly toasted almonds and some fresh herbs. So again, simple dish we've all seen before, just done a little bit better to make you a little bit happier. Pick it off the vine, a little bit of cheese and nut. Really, really good. So this is my New Orleans inspired peel and eat lemon pepper shrimp. This was a dish that was inspired by some friends in New Orleans because it's very sort of like fun, um, great to eat in the warmer weather, and it's super easy to make at home. When I roast these in a pan, having that shell on to protect the skin, it's really gonna enhance the flavor of the shrimp. So you wanna get a nice pan, nice and hot, a little bit of olive oil at the bottom. I'm gonna ever so gently stick my shrimp in there. I'm not gonna move them around too much. I want the outside of that shell to kind of harden and crisp. A little bit of salt, not too much. I'm just gonna allow the skin to roast on one side and then I'm gonna turn them over ever so gently and then just let them cool for a second. Shrimp don't take a very long time to cook. You don't wanna overcook them. Leaving them in the shell is actually gonna almost cocoon that heat in there, making the shrimp actually cook on their own even after I've turned the heat off. And then this is our house lemon pepper mix right there. Don't be shy with it. We like to use a lot of lemon pepper. You can buy lemon pepper in the store already done for you. It's one easy, already mixed kind of a spice. At home, if you have just a regular cutting board that you want to serve it on, makes it so much more interesting than just like your regular party platters. So I'd love to garnish it with just a little bit of freshness, some segmented oranges. Kind of gives that fresh flavor. And I like to serve it with a little bit of a hot sauce mayonnaise. And kind of like what you would have in New Orleans, like some Louisiana hot sauce dipped on your shrimp. Ricotta cheese, probably one of the easiest cheeses to make at home. It's actually just a little bit of cream, milk, yogurt, salt, and nutmeg. And you sort of just bring it up to a simmer, never a rolling boil, because you want to actually allow that curd to form a raft on the top of the milk. You just pour it through a strainer with a little bit of cheesecloth, and it's simple. You let the cheese drain. I just took the biggest bite of cheese. <laughs> and then I serve it with two different dishes. This is the roasted baby beet salad, a little bit of hazelnuts, a little bit of fresh herbs, and two different kinds of beet. And I'm just gonna take some of this fresh ricotta and just ever so slightly tip it over the top. Beautiful, easy to serve, sort of a large platter of it. People can kind of just spoon it onto their plates with an easy ricotta made at home. Also, the nudie. It's like a gnocchi without the potato. Really great dumpling, very delicate, but at the same time just extremely extravagant. Here, they've just been poaching in water for about four minutes. Take them here right into the pan. All it is is eggs, the fresh ricotta cheese, some Parmesan Reggiano, and flour built into these beautiful, delicate little pillowy nudies of decadence. Then I'm gonna take a little bit of brown butter. Very simple, an unsalted butter in a pan 
you just kind of swirl it until it's golden brown. It gives it a really beautiful nutty flavor. Right over the top. Finished it with a little bit of Parmesan Reggiano. A little bit more. You can never have enough Parmesan cheese. Some fresh herb. The ricotta cheese that we made earlier gets folded in with eggs, flour, and Parmesan cheese and makes these beautiful, delicate dumplings. I'm Antonia LaFasso, and you're watching Star Chef Secrets. Be sure to click and subscribe. Ain't nothing like gumbo from K. Paul's Louisiana Kitchen. Check it out. Then follow us to Italy as we investigate cheese made by maggots? Yes, you heard right, maggots. If you haven't lost your appetite, check out a rule-breaking white barbecue sauce and a hot wings recipe that's spicy enough to curl your hair. Click to watch the videos now on Tasted.